Yeah. What's this in your back pocket? I just saw you walking it. It's a navigational aid. What's the problem? You a tyrant? Florida cops mistakenly arrested a legally blind man for carrying a gun. Officers reacted to a report of an armed person nearby. A visually handicapped man was innocently going about his routine when he got confused. Thankfully, the situation was diffused without escalation, and authorities quickly acknowledged their mistake. The incident emphasizes the need for rigorous assessment and correct information in law enforcement to protect citizens' rights and safety. What's your name and date of birth? It doesn't not matter. Yes, sir, it does. Do you have a crime? Would you like me Call to your put supervisor, you in your... He's right here. All right. Don't, you know... Sir, what's the stop you for? For a walking stick. So, and it could look like a weapon. She asked you to really present it, okay? Now she's asking me for to ID. An unexpected incident captivated Lake City, Florida on October 31st, 2022. An abrupt power loss darkened the town's Halloween celebrations. Residents gathered in confused clusters, their costumes lit only by smartphone screens. As the blackout continued, laughter and chatter became curious murmurs. Local authorities worked hard to restore power throughout the night, showing the unexpected frailty of modern festivities. The incident reminded Lake City of the difficult balance between technology and tradition that makes Halloween unique. All right, you deserve it. Okay, 777. 7 Whiskey Mike the team. I don't know where his wallet is. Where's your wallet at, sir? I don't have a wallet on me. Okay, where's your ID? Where's your ID at? Pocket. Officers approached James Hodges cautiously after seeing a probable handgun. They saw a folded navigation cane in his hand when they told him to raise it. The officers mistakenly thought the cane was a pistol in the tense moment. Hodges swiftly described the cane's purpose, emphasizing his vision handicap, calming adrenaline. The event shows how law enforcement struggles to quickly identify threats. After the clarification, relief spread, emphasizing the necessity of good communication and understanding to avoid misunderstandings. Preferably Hotel Hodges' comprehensive explanation seemed to go unheeded following the incident as officers persisted. Despite his attempts to clarify, they handcuffed and arrested him. However, their actions had ser serious consequences. After a comprehensive investigation, the officers faced policy violations, suspensions, and demotions. The incident emphasizes the necessity of law enforcement procedures and communication and the implications of blurring those borders. You know, I put in jail for resisting. Okay. All right, let's go. I want your name and badge number two, sir. Have a seat. You want to pick my property up, please? I sure will, after you have a seat. You want to pull this out of my back pocket? Sure. Here, I'll grab your jacket for you, too. Now, a boyfriend furious and determined sued after an unnerving turn of events. The arrest of the black military veteran in West Virginia for marijuana cultivation has sparked outrage. She remains certain that the arrest was wrong and racially motivated, and she seeks to expose what she sees as an outrageous rights violation. The lawsuit intends to reveal the arrest facts, discuss systemic prejudices, and compensate the veteran for his terrible experience in search of justice. 
John, a young man of color, was unfairly targeted by police due to racial profiling, wrongful arrest, and intimidation. He was unfairly suspected based on his appearance while going about his business. This caused an emotional wrongful arrest and tarnished the community's faith in the legal system. The incident emphasizes the need to end such biases and treat everyone equally and respectfully. A complaint has been filed against local deputies and the county commission for serious civil rights violations. The plaintiffs want compensatory and punitive damages due to alleged wrongdoing and power abuses. Their requests include attorney's costs, emphasizing the alleged infractions. The plaintiff's jury trial request shows their determination to get justice. This lawsuit highlights law enforcement techniques that violate civil freedoms, demanding a critical analysis of their effects on society. Former San Francisco police officer no longer facing criminal charges for a deadly shooting on the job. Today, California Attorney General declined to prosecute Officer Christopher Samoa. The charges stem from a shooting in 2017. Samoa shot Keita O'Neill, an unarmed carjacking suspect, through the window of his patrol car during a pursuit. NBC Bears' Christy Smith spoke to O'Neill's family. They were in court as the judge formally dismissed the case. After four days on the job, rookie cop Chris Samayoa was tragically fired. The rookie officer's career was tarnished by the killing of an unarmed suspect. The event sparked community indignation and issues about police training and lethal use. Samayoa's fast dismissal illustrates law enforcement's increased scrutiny and the necessity for comprehensive reforms to avert such catastrophes. Samayoa, rushed and suspicious, shot Keita O'Neill, the main suspect in the lottery van carjacking. The moment was tense as O'Neill's weaponless body threw doubt on the dramatic measure. Bystanders gasped as the situation escalated abruptly, sparking a conversation regarding law enforcement's power limitations. As they investigate the incident, authorities must weigh public safety and justice. The police chief fired Samayoa during probation due to performance and conduct issues. The police union says Samayoa should have had more time to establish himself. The union statement emphasizes fairness to all officers in a thorough termination review. The event has sparked issues about the department's hiring and training practices, spurring discussions about the responsibility and support for new hires. The San Francisco District Attorney's Office is prosecuting Sam Samayoa for voluntary and involuntary manslaughter. The case centers on a crucial event that occurred under unknown circumstances. As the case progresses, the DA's zeal highlights the claims. The complex case is reflected in the charges which balance intent and irresponsibility. The courtroom drama will likely illustrate and illuminate the legal complexities of the events and San Francisco's quest for accountability. The mother of O'Neill, a city official misconduct victim, files a civil rights complaint in 2021. Just dismissed the case, but Bonta told us he was going to do that. It's just a sad day. I don't know how to respond to this. The complaint against the city alleged O'Neill's rights were infringed. After months of litigation, the city settled for $2.5 million. The settlement gave O'Neill's family justice and highlighted the importance of civil rights and government responsibility. The lawsuit's result reminded us of the ongoing fight for justice and equality. The district attorney's office changed in March 2023, changing the legal environment. This shift led to the crucial dismissal of Sama Yoa's case. The change of events illuminated the case, and the ruling showed the justice system's complexity and ability to change for fairness and truth. Rob Bonta issued a 21-page letter detailing his factual and legal bases for the dismissal. In a recent incident, the rookie officer James Britton faces accusations of aggravated assault and attempted murder. Britton shot Eric Cantu, 18, in a McDonald's parking lot. The shooting led to Britton's police dismissal and trial. The community awaits justice, hoping for a fair and transparent trial that will illuminate the sad event and determine Britton and Cantu's destiny. I couldn't help but notice you just sitting on the patio out there. What's that? I couldn't help but notice you sitting on the patio behind this building. Yeah. Yeah, I just, and there's a sign for no trespassing, private property, that kind of thing. Yeah, I wasn't sure what you were doing, if you lived here, or you worked here. Yeah, it looks like you're working, doing something, figuring yeah, stuff yeah, up. African Americans and other innocent civilians continue to have unsettling law enforcement contacts. The repeated police harassment raises questions about systematic prejudice and unfair treatment. These people going about their normal lives are profiled, harassed, and intimidated. Such occurrences weaken community police confidence and emphasize the critical need for fundamental reforms to guarantee equitable, courteous, and just interactions between law enforcement and all residents, regardless of background. The fight for a more inclusive and unbiased society is essential to 
to addressing these long-standing concerns. You know that, that you do in fact live here. Officer Smiley then asked Zayed to provide some sort of identification with his address on it. John Smiley, a 14-year Boulder police veteran, was in the news after holding Zaid Atkinson for garbage collection. The neighborhood event sparked discussions about social justice and law enforcement. With my address well, a lot of people have a they driver's license. They just carry something with their address on it? Yeah, an ID. Smiley's admirers say he acted out of concern for public safety, while others say the episode shows police forces need more training and awareness. Smiley's plea for Atkinson's address was hesitantly paused, then silenced. The room squeezed as Atkinson's uneasy stare and hesitancy increased. From easy conversation to an unexpected confrontation, Smiley's tenacity contrasted with Atkinson's guardedness. Smiley, now furious, changed his request to identification, sensing the conflict. Why? I just need to verify who you are, that you belong here, that you have a right to be here. Can you have a seat, please? No. Oh, no. Mr. Atkinson? No. No, not. Not. After reluctantly handing his ID, Atkinson saw that his address was missing. The argument heated up quickly without this important detail. Smiley's expectations clashed with Atkinson's seemingly planned omissions, causing frustration and distrust. Smiley watches Atkinson's antics captivated the crowd. Mr. Atkinson, right now you're obstructing a police officer. Which is a jailable offense. I'm asking you one more time to sit down. Last chance, sir. What? Have a seat. What? Well, what? Sit down. Right now, I'm detaining you and investigating you, you for a trespass. You. You're gonna, I fucking live here, dumbass. Sit down. He pointed at a trash clamp and shouted how unsafe it was with a wrinkled brow. The onlookers looked confused, unsure whether to take his statement seriously or dismiss them as a weird tirade. I'm detaining you to investigate. Investigated trespass. I live here. I live here. You, you haven't I'm confirmed that. Sit down. I'm a student. Sit down and I'm I'll confirm it. Anyway. Sit down now. Sit down. I'm not sitting down. Then you're probably going to get tased in a second. Why? Because you have a weapon. Put I that down. Have a weapon. Put it down and comply with my orders. Some laughed under their breath while others raised doubtful eyebrows. Smiley was intrigued by the show and wondered about Atkinson's odd remark. The trash clamp became a topic of amused conversation as the unusual murmur spread, intriguing Smiley. Where I live, there's a sign. I'm not doing anything illegal, and you're not gonna fucking taste me, officer. So Sit how do down. you think about that? Sit down. How do you feel about that, sir? Atkinson and law enforcement fought as authority sought compliance. As voices grew, Atkinson's sense of rights being violated contrasted with tension. Unease surrounded the scenario, emphasizing authority versus individual liberty. Look, I don't want this to go any further, but you need to you comply with my me. orders. I don't have a weapon. That's a weapon. This is a bucket. No, that's a weapon. This right isn't a clamper for picking up garbage, sir. Put it down. I'm telling you, I'm threatened it's not by a it. Weapon. They're not threatened. I'm threatened. You have a fucking gun that kills people. How am I supposed to kill someone? Sit like down, this? sir. Dude, no. Keep that. Keep Sit that down. The police are telling you to do something. Do it. You have a gun in your hand. Yes, I do, because you're not listening. You have a fucking gun you in your hand. You have a weapon. Drop the weapon. Drop it. I don't have a weapon. Drop it now. What are you doing? Drop it now. Drop it now. It now. Just drop it. We're not going anywhere. You need to. If you put that down, I'll put my gun away. I told you why, because it can be used as a weapon. Right. There you go, that's all I need. Yep, you got it. Okay, could you have a seat over here? Now we can talk. Atkinson's belief that the rights are being violated spurred the halt, symbolizing the struggle for autonomy under authority. The confrontation reflected society's debate about law enforcement's role and personal rights. Officer Smiley breached department policies after investigation. However, the investigation found no racial profiling in his behavior. Officer Smiley resigned after these discoveries. The department and Officer Smiley settled, ending the dispute. The incident shows how difficult it is for law enforcement to be accountable and impartial. After this instance, public service inquiries must be transparent and unbiased. 
Recent legal developments include Atkinson's $125,000 lawsuit settlement. The deal acknowledges an illegal stop, creating law enforcement concerns. The city aims to create an oversight board to handle public backlash and fix the underlying issues. This board promotes community trust by increasing local law enforcement transparency and accountability. The settlement and the city's actions are steps towards redressing past wrongs and creating a fairer justice system.